What's up, AP Calculus students? Mr. Ford back again from Christmas break. We're jumping right back into it. We're at section 4.1.3. We got a bunch of problems to look at today. Um, this one might run a little long, so we'll see where we get. It's currently 9.32, and uh, my third hour starts at 9.55. So we'll see how this goes, but here we go. Question 431 is just going to ask us to differentiate the following equations with respect to x. In other words, find dy dx. So question A is one of those ones where I think it's probably best if we actually just um, think about it instead as 1 over x times x plus 1. Because that would be 1 plus 1 over x. Or, in other words, 1 plus x to the negative first power. I like that answer a lot better because now it's easy to take the derivative. dy over dx would just be um, the 1 becomes 0 and the x to the negative first power will be negative x to the negative second power or negative 1 over x squared. We'll probably have to use the room off to the, off to the left on question C, but that would be the first one. Question B, um, we're just doing a couple of uh, trig derivatives here, dy over dx. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of sine is cosine, so not much more to say about that question other than that right there. Question C, again, is probably a good idea if we actually um, simplify it first. Let me use this space to the left here for question C. The original y, which I'm using green for here, that's x to the first times x to the two-thirds power, if you want to think about it that way. And what we're going to do is we're actually just going to add those exponents together. This will be x to the 5 thirds power if we add 3 over 3 to that 2 over 3 there. And so now the derivative becomes pretty easy to get. dy over dx um, will bring the 5 thirds down and multiply it in front. And we'll reduce the 5 thirds down by 1, which is 2 thirds. And honestly, that answer is good enough for me. If you wanted to keep going a little bit, you could do 5 times the cube root of x squared over 3. But that's a little bit excessive if you ask me. Question D, again, we should start by um, rewriting the original. We should actually expand it all the way out so that we can just use the power rule for this one. So this would be 6 plus 10x squared minus 5x. Uh, which one haven't I done? Minus 12x. I just didn't really follow the pattern there. I just kind of started multiplying them all. I think I got all four of them there. So the derivative dy over dx would just be 20x minus 5 minus 12, or uh, 20x minus 17. And that would be the answer there for that question. OK, here's what we're going to get some stuff we're going to do today in class, 432. Evaluate the following integrals without a calculator, and then write a statement about the connection between them. Check your answers with a calculator. We'll be doing that too. OK. So what we're really looking at here, we're just going to really quickly sketch a quick graph of this. I think this is easy to do geometrically. Um, let's just call this 2. Let's call that 9. And this is the line 8x, which I'm just going to make a diagonal line for. I'm not really drawing this to scale. Um, all I really want you to see is that this is just going to be a trapezoid. And all we need to know then is what the lengths of the sides are. We know this is 7 down here. 8 times 9 is 72. And 8 times 2 is 16. So this would be um, 1 half times uh, the two bases added together times the height. 16 plus 72 times 7. Um, let's see, without a calculator, eh? 16 plus 72 would be 88. I think I got that right, times 7. This becomes 44 times 7. I'm going to break and use a calculator for that because I think that's a little excessive. But 44 times 7 is 308. I think that's an acceptable answer for this first question. Um, <clears throat> you know, here's the thing. As I'm actually going to break with tradition here, I'm going to go over to question C next because I think what they want us to see, here, I'll show you. Question C is going to be very much the same, only this time um, you're still going from 2 to 9. But this time your graph is just a really horizontal 5, like that. So this time your graph is just a rectangle. Um, and that rectangle is 5 by 7, or 35. Um, here's what I want you to see, is that if you were to do the same thing, all you would do, 2, 9, in question B, all you would do is you would have that same 35 area um, on top of that same trapezoid area that we did before. Actually, let me, let me boost that up a little bit because it was kind of like this. Um, and it was 2 times 8 was 16 over here and 72 over here and, and, uh, and 7 down here. So this area was 308 like that. I mean, you're just going to be adding those two areas together. 308 plus 35, which is going to be ba, 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 
313 plus 30, 343. That's it for this answer there. So really what you're intended to see, I think, in this problem is that um, the middle answer, question B, is the sum of the other two answers because geometry is going to do that to you anyway. All you're going to do is take the graph of A and of, of 8x and move it up by five spaces, which will just add that rectangle to the bottom of it. Pretty cool. Okay, um, question 433, given the graph at right, um, very similar to what we just did, evaluate um, the integral from 1 to 3 of 2x plus 1 and then 2t plus 1. Um, here's the thing. This variable name doesn't really do anything. All it does is just change the name of the problem. It doesn't affect the answer at all. So we are going to get the same answer for both questions. I think that's the point of this problem here, too. And we're going to find that by doing the same thing we did before. This is a 3, looks like. Um, this is pretty safely a 7, 2 times 3 plus 1. So this is, again, just the area of a trapezoid, which is going to be 1 half times uh, 3 plus 7, which is 10 times 2. And the 1 half and the 2 actually cancel out, so the area is going to be 10. So this integral is equal to 10, and this integral is also equal to 10. And what's the difference is the variables. Otherwise, nothing. So the variable actually doesn't change the problem at all. It just uh, changes of the name of things. Okay, 434 is going to take a little bit of time. I can already tell from just looking at it, but let's we're going to move off to the side and do our work on a, a fresh expanse of blank paper. Uh, write the equations of the two tangent lines to the curve that have a slope of 2. Um, whenever you're looking for tangent lines of the curve or writing the equation of a tangent line, it's a good idea to already be thinking about um, y minus f of a equals f prime of a times x minus a. Um, yep, that's exactly what we're going to do here. And what's important about this is that our lines are going to have a slope of 2. So f prime of a will be 2 in both of our equations. But so if we're going shopping right away, what we're first going to need to know is when is the slope of the line 2? So we're going to take the derivative first and then set it equal to 2 and solve it for x. So that's what we got to do first. So phase one of this problem, this is 434. Just part A, we are not going to do part B because normal or perpendicular lines have not been on the AP calculus test for many, many years. So the original equation is x to the third minus x squared plus x plus 1. So if we take the derivative of that, y prime, we're going to get 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now we are looking for in this problem when the slope of the tangent line is equal to 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this equal to 2 and solve for that. So here's what we have. We have 2 equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. We're going to subtract that 2 over from both sides and we're going to get 0 equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 1. And now we're going to try to factor this. Or you could use the quadratic formula, I suppose. Um, I'm hoping that it factors nicely. These problems tend to not be so nice. So um, We do need a positive 1 and a negative 1. It looks like a minus 1 over here and a plus 1 will do the trick. I think that's the answer. I think that's the, the correct factorization, at least. Um, yes, that will give you the positive 3x squared, the negative 1, and the negative 2x in the middle. So now we can split it up into two problems, where 3x plus 1 equals 0, and also x minus 1 equals 0. So that means that one of our places happens when x is 1, and the other one happens when x is negative 1 third. Those are the two values of x that um, solve this equation up here. In other words, where our um, slope is equal to 2. So that's that. Um, so those are going to be our a's in our expression. So now let's find our two equations of the lines. Um, we're going to do line 1, and we're going to do line 2. We're going to organize our work a little bit here. Line 1 is going to happen when x is equal to negative 1 third. So what we need to know, um, well, we already know that f prime of negative 1 third is equal to 2 because that's kind of how we found negative 1 third. We actually set it equal to 2 and worked backwards. What we still need to know is what regular old f of negative 1 third is, and I think for that we're probably going to use a calculator because we're going to be plugging negative 1 third into the original equation. Oops, sorry, not for y, but for x. 
there, there, and there, those three places. So I'm just going to do this on a calculator really quick. Um, I need to know what one-third to the, can I put that in parentheses? This is not going to be a fun answer, I can already tell you. One-third to the third power minus, in parentheses, one-third squared plus one-third plus one is, um, it's that number, 34 over 27. This problem is garbage, but uh, we're going to keep going anyway because we're pretty much already there. We're going to leave it in nice, simplified form also. So basically, if you want to think about this in point-slope form, there's your x, this is your y, and there's your slope. So we're going to put this into point-slope form right now. It'll look like this. y minus 34 over 27 equals the slope of 2 times x plus 1 third. Um, again, a reminder, we usually use uh, this kind of nomenclature in AP Calculus. In this case, the a is the uh, one third, negative 1 third. The f of a is the uh, 34 over 27. And the f prime of a is the 2 right there. So there's our first equation of the first line. We could do more with that, but we're not going to because we don't need to. Um, the next question is going to happen when x is equal to 1, which will be a little easier, I think, to deal with. Um, we know that f prime of 1 is equal to 2. Again, we already we kind of reverse engineered that answer anyway. And all we need to know now is what is f of 1, which we can probably do in our heads, because again, we're going to plug 1 into the original equation up there. That will be 1 cubed minus 1 squared, which is 0, plus 1 plus 1, which is also 2. So the other equation we're going to write is y minus 2 equals um, 2 times x minus 1. And again, we could easily move that into slope-intercept form, but there's no need to. There are your two answers. We have another problem like this coming up later on in this assignment, so we're going to keep practicing this. Again, don't let the uh, bulkiness of this problem get you too down. You're going to keep seeing them as time goes by, and the more you see them, the more you'll get used to them. They're actually really simple once you get used to the process. Okay, we're not doing part B. 435a, given f of x is sine of x, g of x is x squared, and h of x is 1 over x, use compositions of functions to express each of the following functions. Okay, here we go. So for a, um, we need sine of x squared. That would be f of g of x. Again, you got to see that g of x is the inside part there. Um, here, the, the question b would be the opposite of that. Question b is going to be g of f of x. I've never liked this notation, but this is the sine of x, which is being squared. So this takes the sine of x and plugs it into x squared and, and squares it. Question C, cosecant of x, you might want to remind, remember that's 1 over the sine. So this would be uh, 1 over the sine of x. So that would be h of f of x. And then now you have the cosecant squared of 1 over x. Yikes. Well, 1 over x, that's the most inside part. That's going to be h of x. I know that's going to be the most inside thing I have. Um, as far as the cosecant squared, well, I already know that the cosecant is h of f of x. So let's see. I want to take h of f of x, which is the answer to this question. I actually want to plug that into g of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write g of h of f of. I think that will do it. g of h of f of h of x. I think that's going to happen because now the 1 over x is the most inside part. Um, the f of x would be the sine, which is then going to be put un in underneath 1 in the h of x, and the whole thing is going to be squared. I think that will do it. That's a tricky question. 436, using the distance versus time graph at right, determine if the velocity is positive, negative, or zero at each label point on the graph. This is a distance versus time graph. And so velocity is basically the slope. That's kind of the key concept for AP Calculus right now, is that if you're looking at a distance graph, then the velocity is going to be the slope. So really, we're looking at if the slope is positive or negative. So at point A, it's negative. At point B, it's 0. At point C, it's positive. At point D, it's 0 again. And at E, it's negative again. So it's all about whether the slope is positive or negative at those points. A negative slope heads down to the left. B is horizontal. C is up to the right. D is horizontal again. And E is down to the right. So down, 0, up, 0, down. 
437 is very similar to our adventure in 434. We're going to sketch a graph of that function. We'll do that on the calculator. And the question is, at what points will the line tangent to f be parallel to the secant line through 0, f of 0, and 2, f of 2? So really quickly, let's sketch a graph of that equation. I'm going to plug that into my calculator. x to the third minus 2x squared. I'm push the graph button. We're just going to take a look at what that looks like here. Pretty cool. Now, since we only really care about in this problem, this is 437 off to the side here. I'm going to give myself some room for this. I'm going to sketch that graph. Since we really only care about what's going on around 0 and 2, I'm going to make my graph kind of zoomed in on that point, 2, like this. Um, we'll see, 1, 2, 3, and so forth, like that. Um, here we, f of 0 appears to be 0, and f of 2 also appears to be 0. And this graph does this thing where it comes up, gives a little kiss there, comes down, and then goes up through the axis on its way up there. That's kind of what this graph looks like. Um, this graph is looking for what point... At what point will the line tangent f be parallel to the secant line? Well, here's the thing. That secant line um, is just a, the line y equals 0. Because if you connect those two points, it's just a horizontal line, and uh, there's that. So we're looking for points where the uh, tangent line is also horizontal. One of them is right there at x equals 0. The other one is down here. I'm not really sure what that value is. Um, my calculator can estimate it. Really quick, I'm just going to get a quick minimum between these two points. Uh, it's about 1.333 to x equals 4 thirds, looks like. Is that right? 4 over 3? Yeah, that's correct. Those are the two values, x values, where that happens. Um, those are the maximums and minimums. And that's it. Those, that's We answer the question. Okay, cool. 438 is going to ask us to make another sketch of another graph, so I'm going to do that on my calculator also. x to the third plus 3x squared, minus 45x, plus 8. We'll go ahead and give that a graph, too. Um, what we got to do here, oh, I might want to change my window on this one. We're going to calculate the slope of the line tangent to the curve at x equals negative 2. So that's where we're really focusing our attention, which I do not see on this graph. So I'm going to change my window a little bit. I'm going to make this, uh, how about negative 30 to positive, I don't know, 50. I am just guessing, by the way, at these values. I have no idea where they actually are going to be. Oh, no, that didn't even help. Wow. Whoa, this thing's way out of sorts. Oh, I made x. Whoops. I, want, I still want x to be um, negative 5 to 5. How about that? And we'll take x to negative 30 to 50. We'll see if that works with a scale of 10. Gives us something a little more reasonable to work with. Uh, no, I still want more. This is a good video. Negative 10 to 10. Uh, let's go negative um, 60 to positive 120. Again, I'm just kind of guessing on what those... Oh, wow, it's still up there. Wow. Jeez, I wish on these problems, I really wish they would give us the window to help. That would be a, a way less of a time sink. Because I feel like that's not the challenge of this problem. The challenge of this problem is, is later on. Okay, there we go. That's about as good as I'm going to get for a, a graph for this thing. I just got to remember that my scale is that's negative 100 to positive 200 over there on y. So I'm going to move over here and find some blank space to work with. This is problem 438. So sketching a graph is probably an important skill for us to do. Let's just make sure that it happens really quick. Um, this is going to be 200 up here. It's going to be about negative 100 down there. Um, looks like we have pretty solid zeros. A um, little bit after zero. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, somewhere in here. And then uh, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe right in there too. So this graph goes up and then it comes back down. Sheesh. Goes back up like that. Okay, pretty cool. We are looking for the slope of the line tangent to the curve at x equals negative 2. In other words, we're looking for f prime of negative 2. So we're going to take the derivative of that original function, and we're going to uh, find what happens when you plug in negative 2 to it. So I'm moving over here to my workspace right there. I'm going to make calculator cam a little smaller. And I'm going to look at the function one more time, because our original graph is y equals x to the third plus 3x squared minus 45x plus 8, like that. 
So our derivative, y prime, would be 3x squared plus 6x minus 45. That's our derivative. We need to know what happens when we plug in um, y prime when x is equal to negative 2. I believe that's what we wanted. A slope at negative 2? Yep. So we are going to plug in negative 2 into that equation and get the answer. I'm just going to use the calculator with this. 3 times negative 2 to the second power. Whoops, 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 whoops. Uh, plus 6 times negative 2 minus 45. It's going to be negative 45, looks like. That's interesting. Ooh, is that right? Yeah, it's 12 minus 12. So yes, this is negative 45. That is the slope at that. Um, that's part A. Part B of this problem is going to ask us to determine the point on the curve where the slope is the smallest, the steepest negative slope. Let's see. On this graph, I suspect it's going to happen somewhere in here. Um, what we're looking for here is we're actually looking for the highest negative slope we're going to get. So what we actually want to do is let's measure the slope of that by taking the second derivative. The second derivative will tell us um, where the maximum slope happens. Because the second derivative is telling us the slope of that function right there. Um, where is the slope the steepest? So let's go to the second derivative. Y double prime. That will be 6x plus 6. It's actually really simple. Um, what we're looking for is where that concavity shifts. Because at this point of inflection, right there, that's where the steepest possible negative slope will be. So this will equal 0. 6x plus 6 equals 0 when x is equal to negative 1, looks like. Um, and I would guess that's probably the case. x equals negative 1 looks about right, especially on the actual calculator graph, which is better than my sketchy graph. Um, x equals negative 1 is right there. Yeah, I would say that's probably about the steepest slope you're going to get on this graph. So a second derivative comes in clutch there to help solve that problem. i got about two minutes before my uh, next class starts, but we're almost to the end here, so let's keep it going. 439, we have a piecewise function. What's the limit as x approaches 3 from the right and 3 from the left? And look at that. We have this thing is split up at 3. So for question A, all we really got to do, 3 from the right means values of x that are greater than 3. So negative 2 times 3 minus 5. I'm really just grabbing the, uh, the second part of it because I'm looking for values of x that are greater than 3 right there. That is going to be negative 6 minus 5, which is negative 11. For question B, we're going to do the same thing. Approaching 3 from the left means we're going to use this equation. That's going to be 2 times 3 squared minus 4, which in this case is going to be 2 times 9, which is 18, minus 4, which is 14. And the question is, what do your results um, from parts A and B tell you about F? Well, since they're not the same number, it's not continuous. They would have to be the same number to be continuous. And since they're not, this graph is not continuous at that point. Hey, look at that. That's the bell for a third hour to start. Perfect timing. It's also not differentiable. That it might be a thing to note, too. Not continuous, not differentiable. Pretty cool, man. Hey, we made it through. I'll upload this video when I get a chance. Uh, we'll see. Who knows? Um, and uh, I will talk to you in the next video. You guys are awesome. Keep it up.